Find all the solutions of this equation. z to the power 4 plus 1 equals 0. High exponent. We hate it. And if you subtract 1 from both sides, you can get z to the power 4 equals negative 1. So what's that? Of course, z is not a real number. It is a complex number. Which trick shall we use? How shall we deal with this equation? Firstly, we know that z is a complex number because z to the power 4 is negative 1. 4 is even. For real numbers, any number to the power of an even number is always not negative. But z to the power 4 is negative 1, so z is a complex number. Complex number has its form. So we can suppose z is a plus b times i. Every complex number has this form, a plus b times i, where i is square root of negative 1, the imaginary unit. A secret. Do you know that all the real numbers are also complex numbers? Remember, we can substitute a plus b i for z, and this equation becomes a plus b i also power 4 plus 1 equals 0. Stop, stop, stop. We hate high exponents. Binomial expression is always dreadful. So, I have another trick, and you should understand this. I've said at the beginning of the video, we can subtract this positive 1 from the both sides, and z to the power 4 will be negative 1. It does make sense, doesn't it? Then, what can we get? Negative 1, it is positive or negative i squared. Because i, the marginal unit, it is the square root of negative 1. It is square root of negative 1. It is not a real number, it is an imaginary number. So, z to the power 4 equals negative 1. This negative 1 can be written as positive or negative i all squared. What have you seen? z to the power 4 equals positive or negative i all squared. The left hand side, the exponent is even. The right hand side, the exponent is also even, so we can take a square root on the both sides. Or we can raise the both sides to the power of 1 over 2. Then the left hand side will be z squared. And the right hand side is, of course, positive or negative i. Now you are allowed to substitute a plus bi for this z and the left hand side is going to be a plus bi all squared. The right hand side is still positive or negative i. a plus b times i all squared is positive or negative I. Therefore, the left hand side is a squared plus 2 times ab times i minus b squared. Question is coming. Why is the coefficient of b squared negative 1? Because b times i all squared is b squared times i squared, where i is square root of negative 1, so i squared is negative 1, so b i all squared is negative b squared. So easy. Have you understood? 
Then, change means since a and b are both real numbers, so a squared minus b squared, this 2 times ab times i is of course an imaginary number because it contains our cute i. The right hand side is 0 plus or minus 1 times i. So that's positive or negative i. Why should we do that? Because we have to consider to solve for a squared minus b squared and 2ab. Remember, if two complex numbers are equal, then the real part of the left hand side the real part of the left hand side should be equal to the real part of the right hand side, and the imaginary part as well. The imaginary part of the left hand side should be equal to the imaginary part of the right hand side. So what does it mean? The real part is equal to the real part. The imaginary part is equal to the imaginary part. We can get a system of equations. A squared minus b squared Would this be beautiful? Hmm. I don't know. Should be equal to 1. Sorry, 0, not 1. And 2 times ab times i should be equal to positive or negative 1i. Therefore, 2 times a times b should be equal to positive or negative 1. Some of this equation is quite easy, and that's your work. I'm going to give you a hint. Look, from the first equation of the system of equations, we can get the third binomial formula, a minus b times a plus b, quite easy, is a square minus b squared, the left hand side, and the right hand side is 0. And the second is still the second, 2 times ab is 1 or negative 1. The first case, a minus b is 0, 2ab is 1. The second case, a minus b is 0, 2ab is negative 1. The third case, a plus b is 0, and 2 times ab is 1. And the last case, a plus b is 0, 2ab is negative 1. Four cases, not difficult. Thus, you can solve for the values of a and b easily, successfully, and rapidly. Ah, uh, stop, stop! What? Ah, you have a question. Ah, I know you have a question. You want to ask me, oh, why have a region so small? What about this place? <laughs> you got it right. This is only the first method. Although it is wonderful, it is not, 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 not so clear and a little bit complicated. So I'm gonna call it the first method. M1, M1, and where is M2? M2 is coming, it's on the way. Patience, patience, don't be so hurry. Please have a look on the left hand side z to the power 4 plus 1. We can notice that 4 is very ugly, since it is the exponent. But 4 is even. Oh, and 1, it can also be written as 1 squared, because 1 squared is 1. 1 to the power of any number is always 1. z to the power 4 is a square number, 1 as well. Ah, z is a complex number, so what shall we do? Usually, we consider to factorize the left hand side. How shall we factorize it? The left hand side, z squared, all squared, plus 1 squared. Now, I'm going to add a 2 times z squared. And 
if borrowed two times z squared. You should give it back, shouldn't you? So then, minus two times z squared is zero. Clearly, this section is a perfect square. So it is z squared plus 1 all squared. Then minus here, it can be written as square root of 2 times z all squared. x squared minus y squared is x plus y then times x minus y. So it is z squared plus square root of 2 times z plus 1 and then times z squared minus square root of 2z plus 1. The right hand side, 0. So very good. Then, how many cases do we have? Actually, two, yeah, but we have two small cases as well. z squared plus square root of 2z plus 1 is 0. For first case, is this. For second case, it is z squared minus square root of 2z plus 1 is 0. This 0 goes flying. So, here we have two roots. Here we also have two roots. And you can solve for these four roots yourself. Stop. Now you have a question. I know what your question is. M1, M2. Here, there is also a place. So, what I'm gonna do is to introduce the third method to you, and you should learn this trick. We know that z to the power 4 is ugly. This positive one, not. So now, we're gonna do something about this negative one. z to the power 4 is negative one. So now this negative one, what I'm going to do is to transform it this negative one. It can be written as the exponential form according to the Euler's formula. It is e to the power of i times pi plus 2k pi. And we know it is equal to z to the power 4. We have this exponent 4, so we can raise the both sides to the power of 1 over 4. Left hand side is e to the power of this. The right hand side is z to the power 4. So then, it's going to be e to the power of i times pi plus 2k pi it has to be divided by 4 this thing this is not the answer we have to evaluate k this pi plus 2k pi over 4 it should be smaller than or equal to 2 pi, greater than or equal to 0, actually. Then we get that k should be smaller than or equal to 3. Of course, k is an integer. We always do that, yeah, you know. And it should be greater than or equal to 0. How many possible values? does k have? 4. 0, 1, 2, and 3. 
So then you can substitute these four values for this exponent. K equals 1. Oh, sorry, 0 also. I'm going to write it at last. These four solutions, you can get the answers. From the first two methods, we can only get z is equal to a normal form, a plus bi, a and b are real numbers, and i is square root of negative 1. So, three methods, which one do you prefer? Only 4% people will subscribe to me. Are you one of the 4%? Subscribe to me, give a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.